NFL coaches, players, and fans can't help but get super excited when they add a superstar through a trade or in free agency. But this is the NFL, where many stars change teams and then go downhill. A number of standout players switch their uniforms during the 2017 offseason, but don't get too excited. We've seen how this plays out before. I'm Justin Fraction, and today we dive into 10 NFL players who will suck on their new teams. And we do hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, feel free to click subscribe down below for more cool videos every single day. Number 10. Stephon Gilmore Following a Pro Bowl season with the Buffalo Bills, Stephon Gilmore signed with the New England Patriots on a five-year pact worth $65 million. Gilmore joins a secondary that already includes shutdown corner Malcolm Butler and world-class safety Devin McCourty. But Gilmore was given way too much from Bill Belichick simply for one Pro Bowl season. Gilmore is overly physical and just doesn't fit with Belichick's defense system. Remember when they signed Brandon Browner then released him after a year because he took way too many penalties? Gilmore will have the same problem in New England, just wait. Number 9. Jay Cutler Well, so much for retirement. Miami Dolphins desperately signed quarterback Jay Cutler after Ryan Tannehill tore his ACL in practice. No offense to Cutler, but he couldn't do anything on a Chicago Bears team that included terrific offensive weapons. What makes us think he can revive his career in Miami? It's just not happening. It'd be shocking if Matt Moore wasn't Miami's starter at some point in 2017. Number 8. Kenny Britt After three years with the Rams, Britt now finds himself with another terrible franchise, the Cleveland Browns. Kenny Britt actually surpassed the 1,000-yard receiving mark for the first time in his career in 2016, but the perennial disappointment will likely revert back to his disappointing ways with the Browns. In Cleveland, he'll play second fiddle to Corey Coleman in a passing attack that features a rookie quarterback. Needless to say, Britt's prospects are not trending upwards. Number 7. Dwayne Allen The Colts decided to help an old foe in the New England Patriots by sending talented tight end Dwayne Allen to them, garnering nothing more than a fourth-round pick in return. Allen's best season was in 2012 when he caught 45 passes for 521 yards and three touchdowns. But because he's on the Patriots, people expect him to explode on offense. Not happening. New England's tried using countless tight ends to compliment Rob Gronkowski ever since they lost Aaron Hernandez. It didn't work. Even Martellus Bennett didn't emerge as a game-changer for the Patriots. Expect Allen to become elite all you want. He's not going to get many targets, nor catches, nor yards, nor touchdowns. He's just another depth weapon for Tom Brady. Number 6. Brandon Marshall Marshall was released by the Jets and signed with the New York Giants. Is this the year he finally appears in a playoff game? Maybe, but don't expect Marshall to light up a scoreboard. Marshall has had one of his worst seasons in 2016. It was only the third time he failed to reach 1,000 receiving yards. Now he joins a Giants team that already features star receiver Odell Beckham Jr. and a solid number two in Sterling Shepard. Eli Manning has just too many weapons to throw to here. If anything, the aging Marshall is a number three receiver. If that comes with a playoff appearance, it'll be worth it. But his best years are gone. Number 5. Martellus Bennett Bennett didn't have a terrible stat line for New England in 2016, but with Rob Gronkowski hurt for most of the year, his 55 catches and 7 touchdowns weren't all that impressive. Bennett now joins the Green Bay Packers team that never ever relies on help from tight ends. They already have three elite receivers in Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams, and Randall Cobb. The ground game looks promising with Ty Montgomery as well. So even though Bennett got a three-year deal worth $21 million from the Packers, don't expect jaw-dropping stats. He's not quite an elite tight end, and going to Green Bay doesn't do much to make his stats better. Number 4. Pierre Garçon Following an impressive season with the Washington Redskins that saw him hit 1,041 receiving yards, Garçon left to join the San Francisco 49ers on a five-year pact worth $47.5 million. Way too much money for a guy on the wrong side of 30. Garçon goes from Kirk Cousins to Brian Hoyer? Or Matt Barkley, even? You can see where we stand. Garçon is going to have nobody good throwing the ball to him. Money chasing to a bad team almost never ends well in the NFL. Good luck, Mr. Garçon. Number 3. A.J. Boye Boye had a career year for the Houston Texans in 2016, emerging as a top five cornerback in the NFL. For his one great season, the Jaguars gave Boye a five year deal worth $67.5 million. Because why not? Boye was the product of a Texans defense that was the NFL's best in 2016. Now he goes to a Jaguars team that annually buys defensive talents only to see them flop. Maybe Boye won't be awful but leaving Houston was not a good idea. He left their great defensive system and will be exposed as overrated in Jacksonville. Number 2. Deshaun Jackson The speedy receiver had another 1,000-yard season with the Redskins, but Jackson chose to leave for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who handed him a three-year pact worth $33.5 million. Jackson is on the wrong side of 30 and has lost his speed a bit. He now joins the dangerous duo of Jameis Winston and Mike Evans. In case you didn't know, Winston throws the ball to Evans a lot and it usually works out. Throw and start running back Doug Martin, and you can see how Jackson may struggle to get the ball. He probably won't see many targets, and it'd be surprising if he finished with over a thousand yards again. Don't expect him to light it up in Tampa. 
and number one, Sammy Watkins. So trading up to draft Sammy Watkins fourth overall in 2014 didn't work out well for the Buffalo Bills. Injuries, inconsistency, and mainly awful quarterback play held back Watkins from reaching his full potential in Buffalo. So a trade kind of made sense, but to the LA Rams, no sir, not good. Watkins has terrific speed and athleticism, but it's useless if he doesn't have a good quarterback. What? You think second-year QB Jared Goff is going to make him great or something? Watkins goes from a mediocre QB in Tyron Taylor to a below-mediocre QB in Jared Goff. We're having a tough time seeing where Watkins fits into this terrible Rams offense. Good luck, Sammy. What other NFL players will suck with their new teams? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to Total Pro Sports, though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.